So in my assets, I just built up a bunch of these mosquito files. And I'm going to move all of those, put them into their own folder, select them all with shift, label the folder mosquito flying. That's its movement cycle. It's all these frames. Th that way, when I want to animate my next frame, my next keyframe, it introduces a mosquito coming in from this direction just to get from keyframe one to keyframe two. I decide how many mosquitoes are going to appear before my creature starts to appear, right? So I open up that folder for the mosquito cycle, and this is the next frame. So then I hold down Option. I'm on the, the top most visible layer. Have that selected. Hold down Option, say Layer Merge Visible. This is just if I want to move it to my stage. Command A to select it all. Command C to copy it all. Go to my stage, Command V to paste it in. Now I have two frames. Pretty simple. Now I hit Command D to deselect. I delete that merge layer, and I can do the next one because I don't have my creature yet. So I turn off the earlier one, turn on the new one. Same steps. Option, layer, merge visible. Command A, select it all. Command C, copy it all. Go to my stage, Command V, paste it all. I know it's my stage because I have that little timeline showing in that corner. And it's called my stage file. So now I have three animation frames. Then I hit Command D, deselect, you know, on and on and on. I think I have to kind of choose. Once the mosquito gets past this rock, I'm going to have my creature emerge. So all I need are these two asset layers turned on, my background and my chosen mosquito. And then I merge them together by holding down Option, Layer, Merge Visible, Command A, Command C, and then paste them in to move them onto my animation phase. And this is what I have so far, four frames of animation. And I like that he passes over the moon so you immediately notice it because it's not very big in the frame. And animation isn't great at subtlety. So if you can't have clarity in terms of scale, at least I can have it in terms of contrast here. So I know by moving it in from the side over the, the moon that the viewer is going to notice that because it's the only thing moving. Okay, now deselect, get rid of the merge frame, go to the next mosquito, turn off the old mosquito, option, layer, merge visible. Command A, Command C, paste it in. Now, what if I want to change this asset a little bit? Not only do you change position and you can transform assets, you can also add layer styles to them. Oh, I got to get rid of that frame. Okay. So maybe once it gets to here, it starts to glow a little bit more. I don't have to recreate that layer. All I have to do is double click and give it a layer style where it's glowing a little bit more just on that frame, right? Like a firefly, it really starts to glow. In fact, I can add an inner glow too. Make it pretty subtle at first. I don't want to make it too strong. But now it's kind of just catching more of the, the moonlight. And it's even hard to tell how that's different. So I like this because I can toggle. That was my last frame. This is my new frame. Sometimes I'll, I'll hit Command O on both of them. So they're both the same size, right? I don't know why it's jittering a little bit, but you can see that's going to be the change. So now what do I do? I combine it all. Option, Layer, Merge Visible, Command A, Command C, go over to my stage, Command V, paste it in, go back, Command D to deselect, delete the Merge Visible, go to the next one, and this is something really cool. Do I want it to blink on and off, or do I want to move the effect onto the new layer? You can move effects between layers. You can also copy them on. So what I might do instead is say, Right click and say copy layer style, and then on this one, paste layer style. 
but maybe I just take its overall opacity down a little bit. Maybe up its inner glow, but dim its outer glow. And then, Option, Layer, Merge Visible, Command A to select, Command C to copy, go to my stage, Command V to paste it in. But I forgot something. I got excited, right? Because I said once it gets to here, I wanted my creature to start appearing. And now I have seven frames and my creature isn't there. This is why we set it up in two files because I have every component I need to rebuild my seventh frame and my sixth frame and add my creature in. So this is how I do that. I go back to those steps. This is the first frame where I expect to see my creature. It was this. I'm gonna get rid of those from my stage. And now I'm gonna build this frame and I'm gonna add my creature in. And how can I do that? I want the creature to appear behind the rocks, but I didn't build an asset for behind the rocks, so I have to do that now. This is why the beginning of the process is all about building assets. And I'm gonna use the quick selection tool this time, and I'm just gonna paint the rock. I don't need it to be this beautiful, very careful selection. Just gonna paint the rock, get the edges, That works pretty well. Then I'm going to duplicate it, Command-J. So now I have this rock asset that I'm going to put at the very top of my layers in my assets. So that when I turn on my creature, it's behind the rock. And that kind of works. But I also need to create an asset for this. Because that also overlaps my creature, right? So I'm going to duplicate that, and then I'm going to move that up on top. So now I have a way for my creature to appear behind the mountain. I don't really need these ones. That's my hero smart object. So I'm going to rasterize it now. And rasterizing it allows me to do more kind of movements than just regular transform. It allows me to, to warp but my favorite way that I can move my creature is what's called puppet warp. So if you're doing creature animation, make a duplicate of your hero feature and then go to edit puppet warp. And instead of giving you that, that really simple nine square wireframe to warp, it gives you a polygon mesh on the top of your pixels. It makes it look like a 3D model. It is not a 3D model. There's no way for it to be a 3D model. But what you can do is you can set anchor points by clicking on it. So if I don't want the wing to come up yet, what I want to do is set these anchor points so that I can pivot the wing. Maybe move the head up a little bit on the spine. This is why it's so important to understand the anatomy of your creature design. Move the tail, maybe switch it so it's like this first. Gonna tuck that wing down this way. Maybe fold it back. This is warping, so it is hurting your pixel quality a little bit. But for animation, it works just fine. Okay, so here is my creature. Then maybe I just do a regular transform. Oh, I don't have all the rock there. That's a problem. I'm going to fill that in. That's the problem with quick selections. And take that from my, my background, duplicate it, move it all the way to the top. And then I'm going to merge these three rocks in the foreground all together. There they go. So now they're covering up my creature. And now I can figure out the positioning of how do I want that creature to kind of appear.
I think that's kind of cool. Maybe I'll make it just a little bit bigger, kind of stretch it just a little bit. Organic creatures are very flexible. Right? So let's just save it there. And then that can be my next frame. Now, what if I don't like how bold my creature looks? Because I'm going from, th from this frame all of a sudden to this frame. And I still want people to pay attention to the mosquito moving, right? So what if I dim my creature? Well, how can I do that? I can just use opacity. Or I can use a texture overlay. I don't need to be fancy about it. And I'm not going to be showing the creature's foot, though it's kind of cool that it's there. But I can just cut that out if I want to. Or I can use Puppet Warp again. Edit Puppet Warp. Set the anchor points. You have to set them each time for, like, the joints. And then move that foot back a little bit. So I, I like that frame. I'm going to Puppet Warp it one more time. <laughs> Just so I can get the snout not touching the mountainside. That's a tangency I don't love. There we go. So that's a good kind of appearance of my creature. So then what do I do? I go to the topmost layer. Now it's higher up, right? Because it's these rocks. Hold down Option, say Layer, Merge Visible. Select All, Command A, Command C to copy it all. Go to my stage, Command V to paste it in. And we have the appearance of my creature. And then I might think, you know what? That's cool, but what would be even cooler, this is why you do tests first, is that I want my creature, I'm going to duplicate it, and I'm going to make it fully opaque, but I'm going to fill it with a color overlay of, let's say, this color. Uh, a little bit darker. Oh. There. And I'm first going to have this character just kind of show up as this kind of dark shadow. I'm going to take that opacity down a little bit. Because I think that's more effective than this. And so I can change my frame. And I just do the same steps over again. Option, layer, merge visible, select all, copy, paste. Now, ideally today, I would get my assets built to my middle storyboard. And it took me so many frames just to get to here, right? So if, if even you just get through your top three keyframes, that's great. That's not bad at all. Because now I have an animation test of at least that beginning line. So how can I run the test? First I save it before I put the frames out. And then I say make frames from layers. And then I set my timing by selecting them all. I use a default timing of other 0.3. And then I play it. And I see my mosquito move. And I see my creature up. Yep, that doesn't work. So I have a frame that I didn't delete, right? I can delete that from my frames without it deleting the layer. Okay. So that's where I'm going to save it and leave it, and I can delete that layer I'm not using. Or, yeah, I'm going to delete that layer. Okay. So, save, assets, except for the merge layer, which makes it so you can't see what you're doing, you're going to save, and you're just going to keep making more asset layers. You can organize them into groups, but this will allow you to keep telling your story, right, and have full control. So, to see how it all finishes up, I'm going to show you, 